worry is one of the hindrances. It gets in the way of the mind settling down. And so you have to learn how to deal with it so that it doesn't take over. One way of trying to deal with it is to remind yourself that, or to tell yourself, things will all work out in the end. But that's not a very effective way of dealing with worry, because you look around and you see things not working out. You're going to have to think about the economy or the general state of the world. In a more general state of the world, everybody's getting older, people get sick, and everybody dies in the end. And that can't be covered over by saying, well, it's all for the best. It's hard to see how aging and illness and death are all for the best for anybody. A better way of dealing with worry is to remind yourself that no matter how bad things can get, you can handle it. But that requires that you develop some skills. And it turns out that precisely the skills you need are the ones that you develop by meditating. And the Dharma throws in a few other extra skills as well. The first is having the right attitude toward mistakes when the Buddha was teaching his son. The very first principles. One, be truthful. Two, if you make a mistake, this is what you do. We told him to try to avoid mistakes, but we're born into a world where we don't have a guidebook. And there's no way that every possible situation in the world can be mapped out beforehand and you can be told what to do. So if something in your head says that mistakes are not an option, you have to reprogram yourself. Mistakes can be the way how you learn. In fact, often the best lessons come from having the right attitude for dealing with a mistake. Don't see it as the end of the world. See it as an opportunity to learn a new lesson. On the one hand, once you recognize it, you resolve not to repeat it, and then you go talk it over with someone else, someone who's more experienced on the path. After all, remember the Buddha said our intentions have to be skillful. He didn't say just good, they have to be skillful as well. You try to start out with good intentions, but then you learn that sometimes your good intentions are, are not good enough, or at least not skillful enough, because they have some delusion inside them. And the only way you can get past your delusion is to look at your actions, look at your intentions, and then see what actually happens as a result when you act on those intentions. It's like learning how to walk on a tightrope. It's not the case that you get up on the tightrope and just walk perfectly across the tightrope, perfectly balanced with every step. The first thing you do is you have to learn how to fall so you don't hurt yourself, and then how to get back up on the tightrope. And then as you walk down the tightrope and you're beginning to lose your balance a little bit, you learn how to recover your balance. And that's what walking down the tightrope is all about. You watch someone walking down a tightrope, someone who's professional. A lot of the drama lies in looking at them, and it looks like they're going to lose their balance, but they regain it. They're going to lose it again, but they regain it. It's the skills of recovery that make all the difference. Seeing a mistake, catching it as quickly as you can, and then figuring how not to repeat it. Or if you find yourself heading off in the direction of a mistake, how to redirect yourself. So if you've set up the expectation that everything you do is going to be perfect and there's no room for mistakes, 
you're setting up a situation in which you can't learn, in which you're bound to fail. The right attitude is that there will definitely be mistakes, but there's always a way to recover from them. And John Fuhrman would often say this to his students, that no matter what comes up in the meditation, no matter what weird states you get yourself into, there's always a solution, there's always a way out. And in the beginning you have to depend on the teacher to help you find a way out. But part of your skill as a meditator is learning how to develop that sense for yourself on your own. So even though the mind does get off balance, or you make mistakes, you recognize the fact and you figure out how to bring it back into balance, how to recover from the mistake. A lot of this comes down to your idea about what kind of person you are. There will be that assumption. If, you're the, if you have to carry around the assumption that I'm the sort of person who cannot make a mistake, again, you're setting yourself up for failure. That sense of yourself is going to be very fragile. A more resilient sense of self is the one that's willing to learn from mistakes, wants to learn how to recover. So that whenever you sense yourself going off balance in one direction, you bring it back in the other direction. You learn how to read what's going on more and more carefully. And this comes from learning from the mistakes you've made in the past, so you can recognize what off balance is. Look at the Buddha himself. He was off balance for quite a while, long time. Early part of his life he was off balance in the direction of self-indulgence indulgence in sensual, ple sensual pleasures, sensual desires. Those things ruled his life. And when he began to realize the drawbacks, he went off on the other extreme, self-mortification. So he spent a lot of time being wrong, but he recovered. In the first case, it was developing a sense of how he wanted something more solid, something better, that those sensual pleasures were actually beneath him. And so then he took that moment of pride and he ran with that in another direction, the pride of not being willing to let his mind be a slave to pleasures, not being afraid of pain, and inflicting a lot of unnecessary pain on himself. And pride was what kept him going. But then finally had to realize, well, that pride too was ignoble. It was a mistake. And then he was willing to experiment. It was having that attitude, the willingness to experiment, try something else. That was what got him on the path. So it's normal that we make mistakes in our practice. The important part is that you not allow them to defeat you. We're here to recover. Learn the skills of recovery. How to catch yourself slipping off balance and how to bring yourself back into balance. In the same way that those old fashioned balances used to work. They'd swing from one side, then they'd swing to the other. It wasn't the case they would stay perfectly balanced all the time. Even if you put two identical weights on the trays on either side, they would sway back and forth for a bit and finally come to balance. So learn how to expect that on your path. And don't allow yourself to get discouraged by what seem to be setbacks, because 
progress on the path is not linear. It's like you're training a whole committee of people in here. Sometimes you train one person and he performs in a stellar way, but the whole rest of the committee is just sitting there watching him. They're not playing along yet, so they learn how to pull things back. So when you find yourself with what seems to be a lot of advancing in the practice, followed by a lot of retreating, well, maybe the retreating is due to the fact that there are some lessons that hadn't been learned, so you've got to go back and relearn them. The mind does have its rhythms. It has its ups and downs. You have to learn how to read them and make allowance for them. You can't map out the practice and set a timetable for yourself. Again, you have to try to develop that resilience that can take what looks like a setback and see if you can turn it into something positive. Check to see what, what new lessons can be learned, given the situation. In all these cases, it's your ability to develop re recovery skills. Those are the skills that allow the mind to grow.